Welcome to today's historic Roots Magic webinar. My name is Michael Booth, and I'm Vice President of Roots Magic and one of its developers. And also with us this afternoon is the Roots Magician himself, Bruce Busby. And Bruce, of course, is the President of Roots Magic and its author. Now, our latest update, Roots Magic 5.0.3, introduced the new Who Was There report, which can be as simple or as powerful as you want it to be. At the most basic level, it will print a list of people who may have been in a selected place at a selected time. Or you can use the various options and filters to make this one of the most powerful tools in your genealogy toolbox. Now, this evening, we'll take a look at this new feature and learn how it can help you with finding people in the new 1940 census who served in various wars or simply as an aid when visiting courthouses or archives. And with that introduction, I'll turn the time over to Bruce. Hey, thanks for joining us. Okay, now this particular report that we're going to be talking about is called the Who Was There Report. And as Mike mentioned, this is a brand new report that we just released in version 5.0.3. So if you try to do this and you don't see this report, make sure you're running 5.0.3 or later. And you can do that by going up here to the Help menu, come down here to check, uh, about Roots Magic, and just make sure that that version right there says 5.0.3 or later. Um, if you're running version 5 and you don't have that current version, down here in that bottom corner you're going to see a little, a little notification that there's an update available. You can just click that and that will download the latest update. If you happen to have version 4 or 3 or one of the older ones, then you would need to actually order the upgrade to the version 5 um, to make sure you had the version 5.0.3. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So I am going to go to the reports and I can do that through the reports menu or by clicking the little printer button on my toolbar. And when I do that, this particular report, the Who Was There report, is in the lists category. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to select lists and then these are arranged alphabetically, the lists are, and so who was there is going to be the last one alphabetically. And so you'll just select who was there and click Create Report. And Roots Magic is going to bring up the settings for this particular report. Now we're going to start off with, uh, with a very basic little, uh, kind of the simplest type of who was there list that you can do, and we're going to give you some examples of how you can use this list for a bunch of different things. So the first one we're going to do, we're just going to use these two fields initially, the place that you want to find people in and the date that you want them to be there. So we're going to do something very simple and we're going to just type in USA. Now you can type in USA, United States, uh, U.S.A, you know, whatever, you just type in uh, the country or whatever you're looking for, and then we are looking for the 1940 census, okay, for people. So basically, we want to find a list of everybody who was living in the USA in 1940. We're just going to leave all the other options alone for right now, and let's go ahead and zoom this in. Now, one of the things that, that when you first run this that you'll see and I'm going to go into the settings and point something out, is normally when this report is created, it's going to be printed up in this portrait mode, which means when you generate it, it's going to be printed the long ways up and down. And that's fine if you want it to do that way. Uh, the problem with this is that it does kind of give you a tight squeeze. It does a lot of word wrapping of things. And so the first thing I do on this particular report is change it to landscape mode. Click on the layout button, change it to landscape mode, and that way it will give you a little bit more room across. It will make those columns uh, a little bit wider and so on. Okay, I already see a question. Do you have to put place names in the same format in your database as in your database? The answer is no. This is a very smart report. You'll notice, I'm going to actually zoom in just a little bit right here, and I'm going to scroll over. You notice that the places 
in, in this particular database, some of them have United States. Some of them don't even have USA. But Roots Magic's going to get them because it knows that Utah and Iowa and Idaho, it knows that these places are in the United States. So you basically uh, don't have to worry about that if you type in USA, it's going to get United States. It's going to get USA. It's going to get uh, places, you know, states that don't even happen to have USA tacked on to the end of it or United States tacked on to the end of it. Okay. So let's take a look at what this report is actually going to include. It's going to be an alphabetical list of people who may have been in this place on that date. It's not saying for sure they are, but it's saying based on the data that you have entered in your file, there's a good chance that these people are in this place at that time. So it's going to give you that alphabetical list. It's going to give you the birth date uh, or the christening date if it happens to be a christening. If you don't have a birth date and you have a christening, it will give you that. Same thing for the death date, death or burial. The next column it's going to give you is the person's age on that date. So in other words, not only is it saying this person was probably there on that date, but it's saying this is how old that person would have been on that date. And then over here on the right, in the place column, it's going to list all of the places in that, that particular place you selected. So in this case, I selected USA. So it's going to show that she was born in the USA in this particular location and married in the USA. This person was born, died, buried, and was married in the USA. And it's going to give you the dates uh, that these events happened. Okay, so that is kind of a simple overview of what this particular report is going to look like. So now, let's go back into the settings. And I can actually close this report. I could come up and close this report and start all over. But I can actually just change the settings right from here. Now, let's say instead of USA, I'm just interested in Iowa. So I can type in Iowa. Now, I could type Iowa comma USA or Iowa comma US or whatever. But let's say instead of seeing everybody that might be in the U.S. federal census in 1940. I want to find the people that might have been in Iowa in 1940 so that I can find them for the census. So I'm just going to change that to Iowa and I'm going to regenerate the report. And now this report becomes shorter because it's only going to show you people who may have been in Iowa in 1940. Okay, and it's going to show you the, the Iowa events. Again, it's going to show you the age. All that same information. The only difference now is that instead of people being in the United States, it's only the people in Iowa. So let's say we're actually interested only. Let's take it down to a county level. So I'm going to go to Story, Iowa. Generate the same report. I'm not changing any of these other options. And now I only have the people in Story County, Iowa. And again, not only are these the people that were in Story County, Iowa in 1940, or possibly in Story County, Iowa, but it's going to show you all of the events in their life that were in Story County, Iowa. So some people may have only had one thing, one event in their life may have been in that location. Now they may have had other events, but it's only going to show you the ones that were in the location you selected. Some of them may have had a bunch of um, uh, a bunch of places there. Okay, now let's get even more specific. I can come in here and say, well, instead of Story County, I want Ames, Iowa. Okay, Ames, Iowa. When I click on that, you'll notice it's going to filter it down, so it's only going to show me the people who had an event in Ames, Iowa that would have been around in 1940. Okay, so. You, as you can see, you can go down to all the way down to the city or town level uh, to find places or go out as broadly as, you know, as the state or the country. Okay, so this is great here. What we've been showing you, this is what is really great for the 1940 census, which has just been released. So this will actually help you find the list of people. So if you're if you're trying to find people that may have been in Ames, Iowa in 1940, 
you just you just do this report right there and it filters it down and gives you that report gives you a little bit of information like how old you might have expected them to be so you might know whether or not they're they're living with their you know living with their parents or if they might be a parent themselves okay now this report is not limited to just helping with the census okay this is going to help us in all kinds of ways so let's say I'm interested in people uh, who might have been in South Carolina between 1861 and 1865. In other words, I want to find my, my, my South Carolinans uh, who may have been there during the Civil War. Okay, so I just go ahead and enter South Carolina and put the dates, the date range. This doesn't have to be a specific date, although it can be. You can actually have it be a day, month, and year, a very specific date. But I'm doing it this way. And I'm going to generate the report. And here is my list of everybody who may have been in South Carolina between 1861 and 1865. Okay, and again, it's going to give me the same information or the same types of information, name, birth, death, age, and the places. It's, but, but it's going to be specific to the place I've asked for. Okay. Let's go in and take, use as another example. Let's say I'm going to a courthouse. Okay, I might I might want to find people who were around in Utah in 1940. Okay, who who was around in, in Utah in 1940? And that's going to give me a list right there. Now I can again go down to that county level. So if I'm going to the count, a county courthouse, I can get a list of everybody that may have been in that county during this particular uh, on this particular date let's say I want everybody who may have been in this county period though okay what you'll do is instead of putting just a date put some huge range you know put from 1800 to 2012 okay you can pick some large range you know you could go 1600 to 2012 go back as early as you want and when you generate that report it's going to give you everybody who may have been around uh, anywhere during that time period okay so you're not you're not limited to having a specific date or even a small range if you basically just want a list of everybody who is in that particular place that's that country that state that county that city just pick a huge range uh, a, a huge date range and you're going to be able to get the report like that okay so now let's go ahead and play with some of these options because all we've been doing so far is just changing places and dates. So let's go back. Let's go back in here and go back to uh, USA, um, and let's go ahead and do uh, 1840. Let's see. Let's see what kind of a list we get right there. Okay, here's our list: people who may have been in the USA in 1840. Okay, now when we go to these settings, you'll see that this report here is a good three and a half pages long right here so I'm gonna go back into the settings okay and I'm not I'm gonna go ahead and leave this information right here but I'm going to change the first the first option we're gonna look at is going to be this minimum age and maximum age right now it's saying include everybody who happens to be between the age of 0 and 100 okay Let's say I happen to be looking for people who might be um, soldier age. Uh, so I might come in here and say, well, give me everybody from 16 to, let's say, 40. Okay? Without changing any of this other information and just filtering this, I now have the same report. So it's people in the USA in 1840, but it's going to give me people that were between the age of 16 and 40. Okay? So it's going to filter that out those people that were 0 and 1 and 2. It's going to filter out those people that were 60, 70, 80. So you can use you can use this minimum age and maximum age in a bunch of different ways. You can say um, I only want people if I leave the minimum age at 0 this is going to give me everybody that's under the age of 40. Okay, if I put minimum age of 60 and I pick a maximum age of you know 150 pick some really high number this is basically going to give me everybody 
who was at least 60 at, at that time period. So if you're looking for people that you may, that you may find, um, uh, you know, Social Security type records, you know, um, or, or records, uh, retirement type records, you can do that. So you can, you can do the, use these filters to give you basically any time of type of range. Every, everybody who was between this and that age, everybody who was less than this, everybody who was older than that. Just, uh, just a great way to, you know, to play around with, with those minimum ages. Okay. Now I'm going to come back in and now I'm going to show you one of the other options. You'll notice that right now on this place list, it's all the places it lists are going to be in the city, county, state, country type of order. One of these settings right here is to reverse the place names. Now we have this kind of an option numerous places within the program, and so you probably are familiar with what it does. But when I check that and generate that report, it's the same report except that it reverses the place. So I can see more groupings. Um, you know, so that basically is going to group states together. It's going to group counties together. So if I were to say, show me everybody who was uh, in Iowa, it's going to group those, the group those together uh, by, by county. It's going, to show, it's going to show me the actual counties on those. Okay, let's go ahead and look at another option. Print alternate names. Now, I don't know if I actually have any alternate names uh, in this file, but I'm going to go ahead and tell it to print alternate names. If you do that, what you're going to see, let's look and see if we've got any alternate names in here. There's one right there, Harlem Smith. He was alternately known as Joe Cool. Okay, so if there are alternate names, you're going to see the alternate names show up under each person as well. So if they went by any other names, you're going to have that. Now, the other option, which is similar, is this one, print married name on date. Okay, now, you notice it doesn't just say print married name or print married names. Okay, I'm going to put print married name on date, and we're going to go ahead and generate this, and you'll see that some of these people have a married name. Now, you're only going to see the one married name because what Roots Magic is doing is it is doing this intelligently. It's not just throwing up every married name this person went by. It's, it's going by the married name that this person, and, and it's, this is for the women, of course, um, it's going to display the married name that this person would have uh, been known as on that date you selected. So in other words, I'm saying 1840. So it, if a person was married multiple times, it's going to give me the married name that that person most likely would have had on that date that I selected. Okay. Now, um, let me go back into the settings. And I am going to show um, this one last, these, these, these last two items, uh, they're fairly straightforward. Draw lines between rows and print the preparer information. So if you want your preparer information printed at the end, just go ahead and check that. I honestly would never uncheck this one. Uh, I'm not even sure why we even bothered making it an option, but it's up to you. Uh, if you uncheck that, what it's going to do is it's going to do this. It's going to remove those lines. So if you, if you actually don't like lines, you can remove it. It just makes it a lot harder to tell uh, which pieces of data actually are going with which person. So that's what that option right there is doing. So I, I just leave that the little separator lines option selected. Okay, I'm going to go back into the settings, though, and I am going to leave this as USA in 1840, but what I'm going to do is I can also filter, and but this is a very, very powerful tool. This makes this report extremely powerful. What, what this is doing by selecting a place and a date is saying, give me all the people who may have been in this place on this date, but I may not want everybody in my database that fits that criteria. So I might come in here and select this. Now I can shoot by default, I can choose everyone or I can say uh, everyone, uh, I want to select people from a list. Now if you've used named groups, okay, you may also have your named groups listed here. And um, 
named groups are a bit beyond this particular webinar, but we do have um, earlier webinars where we talk about named groups. And so you can go, ch uh, go watch the earlier webinar where we actually discuss how named groups uh, work. So I'm actually going to come in here and I'm going to say select from a list. And Roots Magic is going to bring up a list of everybody in my file for me to select. Now I could just go in here and pick random people. I can just check whichever people I want. But I don't have the patience to go do that. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to say I want to mark a group of people. And then I can mark a group of people however I want. So I might come in and say, I want to mark the ancestors. So let's say I come down to that the person. Uh, let's do Dr. James Smith. Okay, Dr. James Smith, he's my starting person in this file. And I'm going to say mark his ancestors. And in this case, I'm just going to mark his direct ancestors. I don't need all the collaterals. I just want his direct ancestors and how many generations I want. Click OK. And it's going to mark, you see right there, it's going to mark all the people that were his direct ancestors. Click OK and generate the report. Okay, what this has done is given me a list of everybody who was in the USA in 1840 that is one of his direct ancestors. Okay, so it's filtered out, it's filtered out all those collateral people, and it's given me the people that match my USA 1840 but it's only giving me the ones who were actually in his direct line. Okay, I can also come up here and let's go ahead and choose settings. And instead of doing it that way, I'm going to go ahead and select from a list again. And I'm going to unmark everybody. So I'm going to kind of start from scratch. I'm going to mark and I'm going to say select people based on their data fields. And when I do that, this is where we really get powerful. This is where I can select any kind of criteria I want. I can pick based on names, on facts, on notes, on you know almost anything you can think of, uh, sources. But in this case, what I'm going to go do is I'm going to come in and say everybody whose surname equals Smith. So I'm basically just saying I want to mark everybody whose last name is Smith. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, mark 36 people, and I'm going to click OK. I'm going to generate this report. Uh, hold on a second. Let me go back in here. Select from a list. And I'm going to mark by the data fields. I'm going to say surname is Smith. I'm going to generate the report. And here is that same report, Okay, people who were in the USA possibly in 1840, but it's only giving me the Smiths. Okay, So I can actually filter. Um, I can actually, it, this is kind of like a pre-filter. In other words, I'm saying I want people in the USA in 1840, but I only want to actually look at this group of people. So this actually lets me pre-filter my list before I even bother uh, with, uh, with the who was in this place at this time. Okay, now I've seen a couple of questions up here. Um, like, is the age calculated from January 1st if only a year is entered? Um, it's not quite as simple as that. It, we have some pretty sophisticated date calculating stuff. If you only have a year, uh, keep in mind that the program is going to, you know, make its best guess on, uh, on, on what that date is. Um, if you really want it to be exactly specific, then pick a specific date. Um, Another question is, um, if I only wanted Wabash County, do I need to make it Wabash County, Indiana? The answer would be yes, if you only want it to include Wabash County, Indiana. If another state happened to have a Wabash County, just typing Wabash uh, could possibly give you that. If there, and actually what will happen is if you type just Wabash, and there are Wabashes in multiple places, then you're going to confuse Roots Magic, and all you're going to get are going to be places that actually have the word Wabash in them. That might be in a bunch of different states, but if if Roots Magic cannot figure out um, the specific place you are referring to because you gave it amb ambiguous information, at that point it becomes just a straight uh, search based on the text. So if you want it to be specifically Wabash, Indiana, make sure you put 
Wabash, Indiana. Okay, if you do not, if you don't know a death date, will it not show people over the age of 85? That's a good question. That's actually one of the options that I forgot to mention right here. So let's go ahead and talk about that. If you have people who don't have a birth date or don't have a death date, then Roots Magic is going to use this value here to, to guesstimate uh, when that person may have been born or died based on the, the part that they do have. So in other words, if you have a birth date for a person and you don't have a death date, Roots Magic will use this number. In this case, it'll assume 85. It will give you, it will assume that person lived to be the age of 85. Okay, because it has no other information uh, to base that on. Um, so you can adjust that number, and adjusting that number will actually uh, give you a little bit different information. Uh, you, you'd probably need to experiment with that a little bit to see uh, exactly how it does. Um, so, just, like I say, just experiment with that. You can lower that number, uh, you know, if you want to kind of tighten things up. You can make that number, you know, 100 if you want to kind of loosen it up and make it more likely that somebody may be uh, selected to show up in the report. Uh, the question, uh, does it work in reverse if you only have a death date? Yes, that, that lifespan average is used uh, both going from a known death date to an unknown birth or from a known birth date to an unknown death. Okay, um, so it looks like it looks like those are the uh, the only questions that we've really actually gotten. I mean, we've gotten the questions a lot of times. Uh, one last thing: when they updated Roots Magic, did that update Roots Magic to Go? Um, it will. When you run Roots Magic to Go, uh, it will tell you that you need to update your Roots Magic, copy Roots Magic on the flash drive. So. Uh, we're, we don't want to really, really go into that, but yes, it would do that. So, well, I, I hope you've enjoyed this mini webinar on the Who Was There list. As I mentioned, it's it's great for this eight, this 1940 census, but it goes way, way beyond that in helping you find people that served in wars, people uh, that may have been in a particular neighborhood at a particular time, uh, people that may have lived in an area where you're going to uh, a courthouse or a library in that area. So I hope you've enjoyed this and um, we'll have more webinars coming up over the next few weeks and we hope to see you then. Thanks for joining us.